Welcome back to another version of Tech Notes. In this presentation, we're going to talk, look at a few problems with surge protection and grounding, and actually talk a little bit about high voltage surges as well as some lightning damage. Now, I don't normally get into this side of things because this is more the electrician's domain, but it's really helpful for an HVAC technician to see a few examples of what improper grounding can cause. Now, before we go into this, I'm going to basically ask that everybody consider please subscribing. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, it makes a big difference to those of us on YouTube. If you watch this video and learn something from it, please take a moment and subscribe and share it. Okay, the subscribe button is right under the video. So, a lot of times as an HVAC technician, you're going to come across things that look like burnt panels. This is a burnt disconnect. Um from a high voltage surge occurrence, possibly some lightning. But the bottom line is we had excess current and no place to send it. You'll also find damaged breakers. Okay, if you look at this breaker that I'm holding, the whole top left hand corner of it has been burnt off. And there was also damage to the breaker panel. Now I don't go into the breaker panels that often because again, it goes outside my licensing. This is a generator transfer switch, same house, actually same building. Okay, the generator transfer switch completely destroyed inside. There's a solenoid that has been melted. Um, another solenoid would burnt and just a completely destroyed situation. Every part of this transfer switch is damaged. Now, a lot of times you'll come across where there's a surge protector installed. They can definitely help, and I highly recommend surge protectors. They can either be whole house or for very specific problems. But there's one important thing when you're dealing with any surge protector or any surge suppression. The equipment has to be grounded. Regardless of what type of equipment it is, it has to be grounded. If you look real close at this picture in here, okay, there's a... There's a ground lug here that there's no wiring here for the ground. And if I look down where the wiring comes into the unit, there's no ground. This equipment, this condensing unit, is not grounded. Any electrical issues that occur in this unit, A, will go to the frame of the unit. So if there's a frayed wire or something like that, it's going to ground to the frame. And since that frame is sitting on rubber feet on the concrete pad... Okay, the entire frame is going to be is going to be live, as well as the copper line sets that are going into the inside unit. Now, if the inside unit has a transformer that the common wires on the frame, we're going to blow a transformer and have a whole bunch of other problems to go along with it. By the way, this unit was in the playground of a school. Any electrical issues then become a safety hazard. So grounding is important. It's one of the first things I check for. PVC will not properly ground a building. Okay, another picture. PVC is plastic piping, basically. It will not ground a picture. Sometimes someone grounds something to incorrect piping. It's worth a look. Surge suppressors and protectors require good grounds to work. Many older houses have grounding to piping that will not work properly. Sometimes copper is used in the southern part of the country in parts of the plumbing circuits. In other words, you might find some copper going from the water heater to a to a, um, sink, but copper then ties into the PVC in the foundation. This will not ground. Back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, we did ground to copper piping, but in the southern part of the country, that copper piping does not go down into the foundation in newer constructions. Any surges in these cases will be transmitted via the water and can actually affect a much larger area. You must get excess current directly to ground and no place else. Improper grounding is important. We need to have ground rods. Okay, they're put into the ground, usually eight feet or more under. Needs to be done by an electrician as you may need more than one. Don't mess around with grounding, okay? Depending on location, we might have to have two, three, or four rods. 
in my house, I think we have six rods outside in the ground because of very sandy, dry soil. Doesn't conduct electricity well. If you see a grounding issue, document it and recommend that the customer call a licensed electrician. Grounding issues make surge protectors and suppressors useless. With a surge protector, like the one I showed you back here, or with a whole house surge protector, okay, this surge protector takes the excess current or the spikes of current and puts it to ground. But if this box is not properly grounded, it's not going to work. So again, grounding is very, very important for all systems. So if you see a ground problem, call an electrician. That's basically what I really wanted to get across on this as well as show you some of the damage. Please subscribe to my channel. Subscriptions make a big difference to us. And stay tuned for more tech notes.